right, welcome to Sacramento Soapbox. My name is James Israel. I'll be your host tonight. Um, we want to thank our sponsors. We have Pieces Pizza by The Slice, including low-fat, vegan, and gluten-free options, as well as a fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for supplying pizza for the crew. They're on 21st Street near Capitol Avenue in Sacramento. Also, the Humor Times, which bills itself as the world's funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription in print or digital format. Subscription info along with cartoons, funny fake news, videos, and more can be found at humortimes.com. We'd love to hear from you. If you're on Facebook, please check out our page and comment on our shows at facebook.com slash soapboxsack. And don't forget to check out the archive of past shows that we have up on the YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and put in Soapbox Sacramento in the search box and uh, watch any of the shows in the archive there that you like and uh, comment on them and uh, share what you find. So we'd also like to thank our volunteers behind the scenes who make the show possible and do a great job. And tonight I have a couple very special guests. They're from the Move to Amend uh, organization. We have Keon Bliss. He is the communications coordinator. And Jessica Munger, who is the program coordinator. So we've got a lot of coordination going on here between <laughs> you two. Um, so Move to Amend's website says it is a, lo a, a coalition of hundreds of organizations and individuals committed to social and economic justice, ending corporate rule and building a vibrant democracy that is genuinely accountable to the people, not corporate interests. So that sounds really good to me. Right? Right. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and uh, so how do, how do you uh, accomplish that? In <laughs> 10 words or less. Right, right. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a bumper sticker. <laughs> no, um, so in order to, to take on this mighty task of ending corporate power, um, which, you know, is in every part of our lives, uh, we know that we have to amend the Constitution. So we're working to uh, pass a constitutional amendment to state that corporations and other artificial entities are not people um, and that money is not speech, which seems pretty common sense, I'd say. It does, and it's amazing that it ever got turned around to, to be the other way. I mean, mm -hmm. it makes no sense at all to me. Anyway, so uh, the, uh, at the core of your mission is the petition um, to rescind that uh, the Supreme Court Citizen United ruling, right? Um, it's called the Motion to Amend, and it's at the movementtoamend.org on your website there. Um, let me just read the, it's a real short petition. It says, we, the people of the United States of America, reject the U.S. Supreme Court's Citizen United ruling and other related cases and move to amend our Constitution to firmly establish that money is not speech and that human beings, not corporations, are persons entitled to constitutional rights. So, um, so now, the, uh, as a devil, devil's advocate, I would ask, uh, so you're saying there's something wrong with the Constitution there, <laughs> Keon? <laughs> How well, dare you? <laughs> well, so, like, let's be honest with it here. The U.S. Constitution was written, of course, by human beings, like, with human beings in mind. Right. So at the time of its creation, uh, in fact, corporations were widely reviled uh, by the general public. And, uh, but a century later, here we are, you know, uh, it's become a commonplace business institution. And a century after that, they've become uh, sort of an invisible government, where they're basically the ones calling the shots behind the scenes, even when you know, we're supposed to be a democracy of, by, and for the people. Uh, and this was this wouldn't happen just overnight. This was actually accomplished over the course of decades through incremental changes to the law that was grounded in um, the extremely harmful fiction that corporations are people with constitutional rights the same as you and me, rather than a lot like legal entities uh, bestowed with privileges uh, created for our convenience in doing business together. And uh, at the core of Move to Men's mission, uh, you see in our petition the Supreme Court's uh, in the Supreme Court Citizens United ruling. It's called the motion to amend and is at move to amend.org slash petition. But basically, uh, the core point is to make clear that uh, corporations are subject to regulation by the, uh, by the will of the people, and that only persons would have constitutional rights, and uh, that money is not a form of protected speech, uh, and that it can be regulated in elections. 
Right. Uh, the notion that money is speech, uh, just to me, it's just so, so wrong for any kind of democracy. Um, I mean, if that's true, then a rich person has a lot more speech than me and you, you know, I mean, and th that's not right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it makes no sense at all. Speaking of money, uh, they just flashed the uh, thing on there where it had the stamp. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a stamp that you guys uh, yeah. have available? Yeah. And people could just, you, as we, a form of protest right there, spend, right. spend the money and mm -hmm. have a stamp on there that says, this is not speech. Exactly. <laughs> it's money. Um, so now this um, movement really has a wide appeal. It kind of surprised me that as many Republicans are, are supporting it as are. Um, on, you have a radio program, Kian, and on that uh, you had an interview with Vincent Campos and mm -hmm. Patrick Tarr, who led the, an Iowa County's Republican Party to change its party platform to call for an end to uh, corporate constitutional rights, similar language to the We Are uh, the People Amendment. So um, tell us about the, that and the, and the broad appeal of the right. amendment. So uh, the, the We the People Amendment, you know, amending uh, the Constitution, this movement has uh, crossed the board uh, bipartisan support, or, you know, it is a transpartisan issue. When you uh, look at polls from 2010 all the way to 2014, uh, Republicans have actually supported amending the Constitution to make this clear by margins of over 70%. And when That's you look amazing. at Democrats and independents, it's even higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, when, we've went, when we've gone to cities, uh, towns, and counties across the country and brought this to them, you know, uh, usually, uh, to their local councils you know, and their local governments, uh, they've passed our resolutions usually by margins of over 70%. And uh, this includes liberal and conservative communities alike. Uh, for instance, Brecksville, Ohio in uh, 2012 voted for Mitt Romney uh, and then at the same time passed one of our resolutions by mm -hmm. more, a margin of over 70%. Mm -hmm. And then we also have um, states like Montana, which uh, you know is a very, a very large state, uh, a very large conservative state, mm -hmm. uh, also passed a statewide ballot measure uh, that uh, supported a constitutional amendment. And you know, so we really, this is a m message and a movement that reaches across political lines. That's uh, that's very encouraging because uh, you know, to me, it tells me that people know what's going on, and at least in this issue, and. Uh, um, want it changed and uh, if this is really a representative uh, democracy then our representatives should change it right mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah i think that's what's really beautiful and powerful about this work is that um you know we might disagree on everything else but we probably agree on this yeah right people are people and money is not and neither are corporations um so let's see so, uh, can you can you describe uh, corporate personhood like what that, how that came about, like what it's, how it's, what what do they, actually, how do they defend that? <laughs> what, what do they call? What do, how do they uh, define it? How did this really absurd thing come to yes, be? Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> that's a great question. So there, there's two things I think people refer to when they talk about corporate personhood. One is just um, you know the ability of a corporation to sue and be sued and enter in contracts. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah. We're talking about this concept that corporations are people, so they have the same rights as you or I, uh, which which happened like Keon said over decades. It started. Um, around 1886 in a Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Railroad case right. uh, where corporations started um, you know, being protected by, um, for instance, like the, fourth, the 14th Amendment. And they have the same protections as you and I, which then undermines our community sovereignty. Um, you know, and so that's not to say that corporations shouldn't be really useful tools that help us do business and things, but they're certainly, um, you know, they're certainly not living, breathing right. beings. And they're also subject to charters, right? I mm -hmm. mean, uh, legally, a, a state or a city should be able to revoke a corporation's charter. Never happens, right. I don't think. Well, it used to happen. Yeah. Uh, it was it, back uh, during the early parts, uh, early history of our country. Uh, corporations were actually uh, 
the uh, public entities that actually had to be uh, approved by the state legislature and then signed by the governor. So they were literally creations of law. And their purpose was limited to uh, to one explicit purpose, uh, which was defined in their Articles of Incorporation. Uh, and they were limited in their duration, uh, usually only lasting around 20 years or so. Uh, it wasn't until the Santa Clara County decision when corporations were, uh, well, there, uh, the series of Supreme Court decisions actually uh, led to the 1886 decision, but once corporations were recognized as persons with constitutional rights with, under uh, the Equal Protection Clause, that's when it real uh, when it, their rights started expanding. And now, uh, in today's uh, in today's terms, they have. Uh, Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable search and seizure. They have Fifth Amendment rights uh, to takings, uh, so they have to be justly compensated when laws uh, directly interfere with their businesses. Um, and they also have now First Amendment rights uh, to free speech, uh, where they can spend, uh, and according to the Supreme Court in Buckley versus Vallejo, uh, money is a form of protected political speech uh, when you're spending in elections. So they're mm -hmm. basically allowed to spend unlimited amounts of money in political advocacy. It's a good cartoon about it right there. Right? right. <laughs> if free, if speech is free. Why can't I report the it? the point I was trying to make earlier. You know, if, if money is speech, then that's totally unfair because the rich fat cat up there has a lot more speech than I do. You that's know? for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're going to amend the Constitution, there's another good cartoon. Um, <laughs> if we're going to amend it, what's, what's the process of doing that? Well, uh, the amendment has to be proposed either by a two-thirds vote of both houses of Congress, uh, House, House Representatives and Senate, or else it can be proposed within a constitutional convention where uh, states actually convene, uh, two-thirds of the state legislatures convene and propose on a specific amendment. And um, the amendment, uh, in order for it to come into law, it has to be ratified by those two-thirds of, of Congress and then uh, ratified by three-fourths of the state. So, and the, or by conventions of the state, where the people actually vote uh, within their states and then three-fourths of those states pass it. And all of the amendments of the Constitution, of which there are now 27 of them, were proposed by Congress. All but one were ratified by state legislatures. Um, and the convention route, uh, while has never been used for any of those 27 amendments, uh, it w well, it was used only once, I'm sorry, for uh, ratifying the 21st Amendment, which eliminated per, uh, Prohibition. So, what is move uh, move to amend strategy? Is it is it the uh, to go through Congress or to get the states to? The answer is yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, um, to all the above. <laughs> right. So, at this point, the way we see it, um, those are two very powerful routes, and we don't want to close ourselves off to either of them. Right. So, we we know that there is potential leverage in either of those um, paths and we'll see when we get there. Um, our strategy is certainly a, a grassroots movement is the only thing that's gonna make this happen. So right now our resources go into educating communities and building a broad movement that has the political muscle to make this happen once we get to the decision about how it's gonna go down. Um, so we're, we're open. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you think a broad, broad uh, movement is the only way to do it because those in power already are depending on the big bucks of those same, very same corporations. Precisely. Mm -hmm. So they're not gonna, they're not likely to to move much on that, except for maybe certain representatives like Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Uh, right. Yeah. So you have uh, in the House, you have 22 co-sponsors on this. Yeah. Um, and uh, how many of those are Democrat versus Republican? I think we have one Republican co-sponsor at this mm -hmm. point. Um, okay. And that's only a matter of time before that expands. As Kian said, mm -hmm. you know, we have large bipartisan support here. Right. Um, I would think, though, that it would be harder to get the Republican reps to come over just because <laughs> of their stands on everything, you know. Well, uh, they're so pro-corporate. Um, and they're kind of doing their right. master's bidding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I mean, there, there's an off. But there's often a misconception that you know this uh, this movement to amend the Constitution to end corporate personhood and get money out of politics is supposedly anti-corporation. Really, we su like we support the corporate tool uh, in use of service to the public, but as it is right now, it is being abused and it needs to be brought under clear regulation by will of the people. And when 
we talk with that, like when we talk about that with people, you know, our corporations, people. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're conservative, if or if you're Republican, if you're a Democrat, if you're a Green or Libertarian. Everybody comes to the same conclusion. They are not pe persons. They should not have the same constitutional rights as you and me. And that money, of course, is not speech. So it's right. really we see this as more as a matter of time, and it really just. Uh, requires us as a nation to really stand up and build that uh, build a, a large enough movement that has the power to make to make the demand of Congress and our elected officials to amend this constitution and you can see why um, why businesses or corporations would would want to would not want to change that and and have worked so hard to gain that power through all these years because I mean what organization doesn't want more power, right? right. <laughs> so if you keep giving it to them, they're going to keep taking it. Um, so what about unions and nonprofits? Uh, uh, how do they, are they helping, are they like behind this? Are they helping uh, in the movement? Certainly. So um, as our amendment states, we believe that no artificial entities should have constitutional rights. So that includes unions and nonprofits. Right. However, like Move to Amend is a nonprofit, <laughs> and we um, we work closely with labor. We have a, a labor caucus, and we are supported by labor um, and and working to, um, you know, foster those conversations even more. You know, the reality is that. Um, Unions and nonprofits do very different work often than for-profit corporations do, um, but they need powers and privileges that should be legislated. They shouldn't have inalienable rights. I mean, government doesn't even give us our rights, right? We have them because we exist as humans and mm -hmm. as living things. And so, um, you know, even coming from the perspective of an organization that does enjoy um, nonprofit status, we don't need constitutional rights, you mm -hmm. know. So. Right. So yeah, you'd think that if you were a union or nonprofit, you would feel a little protective over this. But actually, you know, we work closely with labor. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, so now playing devil's advocate again, um, are, aren't there other ways to solve the problems created by uh, Citizens United, or is this the only way? <laughs> well, certainly. I mean, uh, of course, Citizens United, being the widely criticized decision as was. Um, uh, none of the proposed responses uh, right now to Citizens United, except for uh, Are We the People Amendment, directly confronts the fact that Citizens United uh, was only the latest in a long history of, prob of problematic Supreme Court cases uh, that are dealing with corporate personhood. And um, the problem with like overturning only Citizens United is that it wouldn't be enough to change it. Basically, if you're overturning Citizens United, you're only turning the clock back to 2009. What is going to be needed in order to really reverse the root problem at the heart of Citizens United is an amendment that makes clear that uh, human beings, not corporations, are entitled to constitutional rights and that money is not a form of protected speech and that uh, Congress does have the power to, reg and so along with uh, local and state uh, governments, have the power to regulate uh, campaign spending in elections in order to make sure that ev uh, everyone, regardless of economic class, can participate within the process. Right. Um, so you guys do a lot of different. You have a, you have a lot of different ways of doing what you do. Um, I don't think we showed the photo yet of uh, you, uh, unfurling uh, some some of your group anyway. Unfurling the big banner over the highway overpass. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that that you do often? Yeah. It's a we tool. get we get really creative. Yeah. <laughs> our our. Um, Move to Amend is almost entirely volunteer run, and these are some folks, I think this is from Minnesota, um, and they, they make these great uh, banners and, and they share with their friends and come together and make this great thing, and they go put it up over a, a freeway pass. Probably get a um, lot of cars honking in the green. Lots agreement. of honks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and we've got other images. Um, we, have, we work closely with artists and communities to do creative actions, and. Um, yeah. How about like uh, marches, that sort of thing. Sure, lots mm -hmm. of lots of things like that. Um, Have you done anything at uh, like a, a big demonstration at the local um, capital here in Sacramento yet, or? Um, not since that? we've been here. Although there was a, we're from Move to Amend National. There's a local affiliate group here who has done a lot of creative stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. Right, and uh, anything coming up uh, that you guys want to talk about that's happening locally? 
Well, uh, if we're talking locally in Sacramento, uh, we actually do have uh, the Sacramento Move to Amend aff affiliate uh, is currently in the process of uh, restarting itself, and uh, we're looking to get new volunteers uh, to join in and uh, really participate and, and spread the word and make uh, and bring Sacramento's community into uh, the, nat in the nat growing national movement. To Can they the find the info for that on the same website? Absolutely. Move if to you go to uh, movetomend.org, uh, you can uh, and if you haven't already, go to movetomen.org uh, slash motion to sign the petition. And uh, if you're interested in volunteering, all you have to do is just uh, check the box when it asks you to volunteer, and uh, we will get back to you uh, typically within the first week. Uh, Excellent. Mm -hmm. So now uh, also um, in California, we've got uh, Proposition 59, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that is a big deal coming up right here in, what, a couple months? Mm -hmm. Yes. Election, less than two months. Um, there's someone doing the tabling for it right there. Mm -hmm. Yes, on 59. Um, so talk about that uh, amendment. So Proposition 59 um, is... That's uh, not an amendment. Sorry. It is not it's, an amendment. Uh, it is a voter instruction that's on the ballot uh, November, for uh, November 2016, uh, which will basically ask uh, the largest state in the country um, whether their congressional representatives, California's representatives, uh, should use their authority to uh, to call for an amendment to the con Constitution that unequivocally states that cons uh, the corporations do not have the same constitutional rights as human beings and that money is not speech. And um, what, while this doesn't have uh, a legally binding measure to force them to do this right now, this is uh, helps build the movement by putting pressure on our state and uh, national representatives that the uh, people uh, the people of the United States uh, and in this case California being the largest population uh, wants their uh, wants their representatives to take action on an amendment that makes this clear for them because as we can see from state politics and uh, from local state and federal politics you know the outsized uh, influence of corporations and their wealthy owners uh, is unprecedented. It's only been getting worse since Citizens United and even before then. Have you seen any polls on how it's going on this uh, prop? Uh, and is particularly in California, uh, yeah. the last poll that I saw, we were up by uh, fi we were up 55 to 45. Nice. But um, uh, this is only going to be changing as the day goes on, and uh, we're already in the process of. Uh, uh, launching our statewide campaign. Uh, all the California affiliates uh, for Move to Amend are getting involved in this, and we're also part of a coalition of local and state organizations that have been doing this, uh, particularly Money Out, Voters In, uh, has been, in, have been involved with this process to get Prop, Prop 59 on the ballot uh, every step of the way. And then we've also got uh, other organizations, including uh, Common Cause of California, uh, Clean Money, uh, Clean Money Care Californians, I believe is the name of it, and then also uh, Free Speech for People involved. Um, how can someone uh, request a Move to Amend speaker to come to their group or event? You can email me. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can give us a call at our office. Our, our number is right there at the bottom of the website. and It's okay. a nice website, but we're a small office, so um, you can call for me, Jessica. Um, you can also email us, info at movetoamend.org, and a real human being will give you uh, an answer and, and try then, uh, to get something. I was also going to ask how can viewers connect with uh, other people in their community already working on Move to Men, probably the same way, right? Through mm -hmm. the website? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, there is a map on our website if you go to uh, move to men org. There's uh, a picture you of can, the website there. Right. You can actually, uh, if you click on uh, the tabs where it says uh, state, uh, state groups or state pages and local pages, uh, you'll actually find. Uh, the pages for the state that list all the affiliates uh, that are within that state, and also you can uh, look at local communities that have already that have uh, confirmed active affiliates and uh, go directly to their pages. Right. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, I think uh, we're down to like a few minutes here. Uh, what what do you want to talk about? Make sure people know about. Here's what I'd say: whatever your number one issue is, whether it's environmental justice or anything that you work on this is your number two issue. You will run into it. Uh -huh. And no matter like what your, what your game is, if you're an artist, if you're a lawyer, if you're a union person, um, a person of faith, like whatever, we'll get you in where you fit in. So get in touch with us and we'd love to have, have you be part of the movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you're saying uh, you'll bump into this issue because it's so it's fundamental. <laughs> so fundamental, it's at the root of yeah. every problem, right. you know? It, um, is. it really is, I yeah. think, yeah. 
Yeah, if you see, it, like if you're thinking about uh, any one major issue that you're dealing with right now, uh, typically there is a corporation or a major corporate industry that stands in the way or is, or is against your issue. Right. So, I mean, this really connects across partisan lines, across uh, social lines, and, you know, it's something that uh, really strikes to the core of so many issues. And if we are able to amend the Constitution, and level the playing field, you know, this really gives us the, the foot in the door to actually create a genuine democracy that is accountable to all people, regardless of race, sex, or class. Uh, and really just want to emphasize this is not a sprint, this is a marathon. Uh, cons constitutional amendments do not pass overnight, uh, it doesn't even pass in the next year. Uh, typically, constitutions take decades to pass. And Within the last uh, six or six to seven years that Move to Men has been around, we have already gotten an amendment in the uh, U.S. House of Representatives. It's a House Joint Resolution 48, the We the People Amendment, um, and we've already up to two, 22 co-sponsors, as Jessica mentioned earlier. So, really, and uh, you were saying earlier uh, before the show, you have 410,000 people right. signed up around the country. Exactly. 410,000 signatures. So if uh, everyone viewing tonight uh, goes to the website and signs up, you'll have a few more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, millions more, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. And then you'll get emails about how to join our Sacramento meetings. Right. Yeah. There you go. Um, and this, I could see how this would affect um, vote, um, the elections as well because uh, corporations right now have so much power to uh, influence elections. Uh, would, how would this, do you think it would affect that very much? <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. it would certainly give our representatives a much needed break so they don't spend yeah. more than 70% of their time just uh, right. <laughs> like look, asking for money. Right. And it would give so us an opportunity to really uh, show our voices up and like re actually reach our representatives. And, and maybe they would actually represent the people. Imagine right. that. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it should be. So uh, yeah, folks, go to the website, check it out. Um, you know, uh, definitely vote for this uh, proposition coming up in the next election very soon. Um, get a speaker out to your events, your organizations, churches, mm -hmm. anything, right? Anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, get involved. It's uh, it's really basic to um, our democracy. So. Very important, and I really want to thank you too for coming out and joining us, uh, Keon, Keon, Keon Bliss, mm -hmm. and Jessica Munger. That's it. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right.